Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top five technical indicators that new traders need to be using, okay? Listen, one thing I see a lot, and maybe you fell into that trap, and I know I did when I got started, of adding too many indicators. I've seen some of these charts, and oh my gosh, there's lines everywhere. And, you know, listen, technical indicators are important, but so many newer traders overcomplicate things. That being said, you're gonna start out with these five, and then I'm not saying this is the only five indicators you use for the end of time, but this is a base, this is a good foundation, and once you start finding consistency, then you start adding data points, then you start tracking that data, and you can see is the Ikemocho cloud, which quite possibly, I don't, I don't use it, but it's my favorite technical indicator just because of the cool name. But it, you, know, you can see if the Ikemocho cloud is actually helping you or if RSI is actually helping you or if Bollinger Bands are helping you or one of my favorite indicators that we won't talk about is the Oracle support and resistance levels. Is it really helping you? So that being said, one thing we're always gonna be looking at right off the bat is volume. Volume, 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 okay? Um, something you'll see like the stock I'm gonna talk about today and another one, I mean, look at uh, SBFM, okay? This is a recent issue, just started trading a little while ago, but you can see there in, in March and early April, you know, not unusual volume, not unusual movement. You look at the other day, that explodes into 150 million shares, pushes the stock to six bucks, now you know you got something going on, okay? You know that there's a good chance that this stock could run all day. Even better example, MNTS. Awesome stock today, exploding to highs. And I mean, look at this thing. So this is a aerospace company, long-term downtrending stock. I mean, look, listen, these volume candles are correct, okay? This isn't like, you, you can see them, they're itty bitty, okay? This thing did have volume, but then you look at today, they drop news that they've got a deal with SpaceX, Elon Musk's company, depending on when you are watching this, Elon is the, the hottest thing out there right now. Just the other day, um, Elon bought that 9.2% stake in Twitter. Obviously, Tesla is an amazing stock. The market is just looking for these Elon plays. That's kind of like the hot sector right now. Now, when you're watching this, it might fade, but you can see, I mean, look at this thing. We're, I'm recording at 11 a.m., and 80 million shares traded. And again, look at that compared to the rest of the day. Now, does that guarantee, ooh, look at this thing trying to test the highs. But does that guarantee that this stock is gonna continue to five, continue to 550, continue six? Doesn't guarantee, but remember, more buyers, more people willing to bid, more people willing to chase, more people in love with the story, there is a much higher probability that this stock does continue to five to 550 and on. So look for that unusual volume. In Stocks to Trade, the indicator I look at, and you'll see it's right here in your basics box, is that 60-day average volume. Now, I use that, and again, you can, you can use different time frames if you want. I like the 60-day because it gives me a snapshot of recent price or recent volume, but not going back too far. I mean, listen, I don't really care. Ooh, look at that. I don't really care about the volume from two years ago, three years ago. I mean, I mean, listen, it was a different world. Two years ago was before COVID, okay? I mean, it was a different world. Or, or three years ago, or four years ago, or five years ago. So the 60-day gives me a good snapshot, good data sample to base it off of. And again, you can see 750,000, okay? Didn't, wasn't even average a million shares a day before today. Again, here we are midday, 80 million. I mean, there's a good chance. I mean, if this keeps pushing a high day, good chance it could be trading two, 300 million. By the way, drop me a comment. I am recording on April 7th, 2022. How many shares did uh, MNTS trade today? Drop me a comment. All right, the other thing is use candlestick charts, okay? Um, I know if you're new, if you're on Robinhood, currently, you know, Robinhood is only line charts. I'm not, I'm not a Robinhood hater. I actually think Robinhood is a great brokerage to learn from. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're new, the free brokers are great. I mean, I know they're, they're selling your order flow, and I know I remember the, the GameStop debacle and, and locking you out of trades. But, I mean, listen, if you're brand new and you're trading a couple hundred dollar account because you're trying to learn, free trading is huge, huge tool. I mean, I look back when I got started, you know, commissions were way higher, you know, 15 years ago. 
you know, <laughs> but, but you know, and, and you could make good trades and the commissions would just eat you up. And, you know, you'd be paying, I mean, listen, some of these stocks back then, you'd be paying a hundred bucks in commission, you know, and I mean, even if you made, you know, you're new, you make two, 300 bucks. Well, you didn't make 200, 300 bucks because you had $50 each way on your commission. So anyway, my point is I'm not a Robin Hood basher, but definitely check out other charting platforms that have candlesticks. Obviously, I'm a little biased. Check out Stocks to Trade. Hit the link below. We've got always running different specials, different promotions. Great way to access all these tools and get the candlestick charts. Next is VWAP, and I'm actually going to drop off that, that indicator I talk about all the time, the Oracle levels, and just add VWAP so that you can see that. And whoops, let me get there. I'm clicking all around too fast. So anyway, VWAP is the number one technical indicator. And really, in my opinion, it's about the only one you need. Okay. So I've done a bunch of, uh, of other videos. You can check out the archive explaining what that VWAP is, explaining how to use it. Today, I'm trying to keep it short. But what I love about um, VWAP is it's an amalgamation of volume and price action. And again, not to get too verbose, not to get too in depth. It really just gives you a read of, in theory, you know, when the stock is above VWAP, the, the, the volume is building and the price is building. So it's considered bullish. And then what's great about VWAP is it's, it's an indicator long or short, because if you've got, if you're below VWAP, that's telling you that the price is fading and the volume is fading, which is a bearish indicator, which two things, if you're long, it's telling you, hey, time to stop out. Or if you're a short bias trader, that's a lot of times your, your good entry, those late day VWAP fails, because that tells you the volume's coming out and the price is dropping and nobody wants in. So it's just a great bullish bearish indicator to guide you through that sentiment. Um, la or not last, but last two, is the high of the day and the low of the day. We love to use these indicators. I'm gonna jump back to SBFM as an example because it really gives us a, that idea of areas where we wanna avoid or get aggressive. So you can see this morning, the low on SBFM was six and that, that's the 4 a.m. low. Okay, this is right when pre-market opened. And you can see it really just kind of base there, base there, base there. So that's tell, giving you an indicator, which also here last night's close was right at six and after hours held at six. So you can see that that is a level of defense, okay? And then it's also an area to key off of. Now, that previous high would have been 770, and you can see when 770 broke right here, which would have been the high a day from pre-market as well as the market open, boom, 885 high a day currently. So you can key off of those whole dollar, half dollars, high a days, low a days, again, to get a gauge bearish bullish. I mean, listen, if let's say SBFM opened weak and took out that morning low, this is a low float, very sketchy biotech. Okay, you take out the lows, avoid it like the plague. Now, you're breaking that high, especially that pre-market, you know, that 830 high right here, Again, at that 775, which cor corresponds with last night's highs as well, that's a big break. And you can see it blows up to 885. Now, right here we are. Woo! We're consolidating at VWAP. VWAP's currently 790, my favorite indicator. And then we're going into that sideways action, which again, check out the archive. We're setting up for that VWAP hold high a day break. I've done about 10 videos on that. But the longer this consolidates at VWAP, the more you can trade against that 880 level for that breakout. And then the last one is that opening price or what I call the red to green, green to red line or the previous day's close. Always, always, always have that indicator on your uh, watch. You know, if you're on Stocks to Trade Advisory, you know, we talk about those weak open red to green setups all the time, you know, and you can see, like, look at Tesla. Look at when this thing broke that uh, green to red line washing out here, okay? A lot of the times when we get those uh, red to green moves, you get those big moves. That, and you can see how like Black Rifle based off of that previous day's close. So a lot of different names. Um, it, it's the previous day's close. It's the red to green, green to red line. Um, and keep in mind, this gets confused a lot and I don't blame you. That red to green, green to red line, previous day's close is always the 4 p.m. 
Eastern close. Okay, a lot of traders don't trade in after hours. So a lot of people get tripped up and they think the previous day's closed is based on the 8 p.m. Eastern close, which, you know, if you're trading NASDAQs and NYSE stocks, you know they trade all the way up to 8 p.m. OTCs don't, but the, the listed stocks do. So remember that is always based off the 4 p.m. Eastern previous day's close. And those are the five indicators you need to use. And really, I mean, I am telling you, and you can choose to agree or disagree. I love to debate, I love to argue, but until you're consistent, okay, until you're consistently growing your account, until things really start clicking, don't add more. I know it's tempting, you'll watch another YouTube video, which hey, take advantage of all the resources, and you'll see adding all these lines and doing all this stuff, don't fall for that temptation. Once you get consistent, then look to branch out. And if you're looking to find a way to get consistent, check out the Steady Trade team. Hit that link below. It's a mentorship program I've been running for six years now. Jeez, time flies. Jesus, six years. I'm like 88 years old by now. Anyway, I've done three, almost 3,500 webinars. I'm live twice a day, every single day, and it's, real, it's live and interactive, and it's the best way to become a consistently profitable trader. Check out the Steady Trade team, and I'll see you next time.